So you can see the Benny Bohm diagram giving values like when the shear is about zero, value close to 510 for the bending moment. And here, certain bending moment of 658 at the support and then uh, like that. so basically I have used the values from uh, sub 2000 for the design example. So you can see the values I have got are something like uh, 674 here, 508 here, 206 here, 524, 278 and so on. So this time rather than using this uh, simplified method, I have actually uh, determined the bending moments and shear forces by using uh, the a program like SAP 2000. So which means we can actually design the inverted T-beam and when you are designing the inverted T-beam uh, at the support it bends like this which means uh, tension occurs at the bottom and that means the flange is in tension. The flange is in tension, we have to design it as a rectangular section. And in the span, when 508 is acting, it is bent in this way, like this, which means uh, flange is in compression, web is in tension. So we can design it, design the beam here as a flange beam. So the beam can be designed as a flange beam here, a rectangular beam here. So because we are using a depth of 900 millimeters, the effective depth has been considered as 840 millimeters and you can decide on the reinforcement. And the reinforcement that you need will depend on the Z value. The Z has been calculated as 0.93D and uh, it's 781 millimeters, 674 is the moment. So you can find the reinforcement requirement. And the reinforcement requirement is 1983 millimeters squared. And you can also check the minimum reinforcement. And you can see it's 567 millimeters squared. So the requirement is less, is much more than the minimum. So we can actually say that the section is okay section is not too large, section is okay. So when we can decide on the number of 20 millimeter bars, we need seven numbers of H20 bars, so four numbers of H25 bars. So you can provide either four numbers of H25 bars or seven numbers of H20 bars. And all these will be needed as bottom reinforcement. All these will be needed as bottom reinforcement. So that is here. Then we have to see what's going on here. And the bending moment is 508. It's behaving as a flange beam. And it's an important thing because, you know, when you have a flange beam, uh, we have to design it carefully by considering a few important aspects. So it's a bending moment of 508. The first thing is to determine the width of the flange, width of the flange, and width of the flange will depend on the distance between a point of contraflexure or point of zero moments 
And uh, here you can see, when you look at the bending moment diagram, you can see the distance between the zero moments can be obtained like this. But the equation that is given is uh, 0.85 times L. And if you look at one of these uh, spans, and you can see the distance between point zero moments will be lesser. And it is considered as equal to 0 0.7 times the span. Whereas in the, in a, in a beam, you know, in the first span or the outer span, it is considered as 0.85 times the length of the beam. So that is important. So you have to use uh, this particular value 0.85 times L1. And then uh, it also depends on how much width is available here. And that is 0.2 times this particular width plus 0.1 times this distance. And we get it on both sides. So you have to multiply this by two and you are at the width of the web to that, then you can get the front width. So it is two times 0.1 times 0.85L, 0.1 times 0.85L plus 0.2 times this width and the width of the base is two meters. So you will find that the, the overhang is uh, one meter minus half the width of the web and uh, there is one equation and it should also be less than 0.2 times L naught. This should also be less than 0.2 times L naught. That is 0.85 times 3.5 multiplied by 0.2. And we get it on both sides. So you have to multiply it by two plus 0.45. So 0.45 is the width of the web. So when you substitute in this equation, you can see, although we have a width of two meters for the flange, only 1.35 meters can be used. Only 1.35 meters can be used, although we are having a width of two meters for the flange. And when you use 1.35 meters and determine the amount of reinforcement, again, you'll see 0.95 D governs and uh, we can also find so once you know the depth to the neutral axis and the z value we can also check whether the neutral axis is within the flange or we can see what is the value of s and this is d and this s this is s by 2 z is equal to d minus s by 2. From that, we can find s is equal to 2 times d minus z. And z is 0.95 d. So you can see s is equal to 0.1 d. And 0.1 times 840 is 84 millimeters. So we don't have a problem because uh, the s is 0.84. The thickness of the flange is 300 millimeters. So the neutral axis is within the flange. So we don't have a problem. But only thing is we can make use of only 1.35 meters of flange for the calculations. So it can be designed as a flange beam. And we have to find the reinforcement. And when you find the reinforcement for a moment of 508 and a Lever arm of 798, it's 1463 millimeters squared. And we can we also have to check the minimum reinforcement, which is 567. And here the beam is bending upwards, like in the bending moment diagram. Beam is bending like this. So the tension reinforcement should be provided at the top of the beam. Tension reinforcement should be provided at the top of the beam. So 
earlier we calculated the bottom reinforcement here. Now we have calculated the top reinforcement here. And the top reinforcement that we need is five numbers of H20 bars. Five numbers of H20 bars. Whereas earlier we needed seven numbers of H20 bars. And if you are providing with uh, 25 millimeter bars, we need only three bars. Because one 25 millimeter bar has an area of 490 square millimeters. And uh, the requirement is 1463. And 490 into 3 is 1470. So we can provide that. So we can write either 25 millimeter bars or 20 millimeter bars. So this way we can, we know the reinforcement in the in order T and it, we can see it's fairly efficient. Then we have to decide the transverse reinforcement. And that is, you know, this in order T is bending in the transverse direction. So we have to, know, we have to find this reinforcement. To find this reinforcement, we have to find the we have to find the the bending moment at this section. We have to find the bending moment at this section. So when you find the bending moment at this section, this thickness is important. And also we like to know the pressure from below. Pressure is given by 268 kilonewtons per meter squared. So pressure is 268 kilonewtons per meter squared. We can consider one meter width, one meter width or one meter length of the base and find the transverse bending moment. And when you calculate the transverse bending moment, you can see in the transverse direction, the maximum moment could be calculated on the assumption that a length of 775 millimeter cantilever is uh, available. And uh, what actually happens is, so we have the base. Fifty and thousand two twenty five. So this is seven seventy five subjected to these loads. Check here and these three hundred. We are providing this reinforcement this way. So the bending moment is given by 268 multiplied by 1.0 multiplied by 0.775 that is the load multiplied by 0.775 divided by 2 and that will give the bending moment so So you can see the bending moment is 268 multiplied by 0.775 square divided by 2 which is 80.4 kilonewton meters per meter and then we also need to find the effective depth for a cover of 40 millimeter and uh, considering that 16 millimeter bars will be used in the transverse direction you will end up with uh, 252 millimeter effective depth and we can calculate the MO FCK BD squared that is the K value which is less than 0.167 singly reinforced and you can also find the liver arm. Liver arm is 0.95 D or 239 millimeters and for that you can work out the reinforcement area of reinforcement needed and A is given by many moment divided by 0.87 FI liver arm, and you can see we need 773 square millimeters per meter width. 
and then you can check the minimum reinforcement also and minimum reinforcement is 378 so we had to provide 773 with 16 millimeter bars having 201 square millimeter area so we need 3.84 bars or we can provide it 16 at 250 centers it's 16 at 250 centers and then we are providing 804 millimeter square per meter uh, bottom reinforcement or transverse reinforcement in the uh, in the flange so with that we can work out the reinforcement requirement in the uh, inverted t beam and the bottom we have calculated by using uh, this moment yes at the bottom we have calculated by using this moment seven numbers of 20 millimeter bars we have calculated here use for the top reinforcement five numbers of 20 millimeter bars and we have also considered the transverse reinforcement in the flange and that has that is uh, 16 millimeter bars at 250 centers so basically we know the main reinforcement but we should also check the shear reinforcement we also should check the shear reinforcement So we have calculated the uh, transverse reinforcement. But you have to also be mindful that you know this area may need some adjustment to allow for shear between the flange and the web that can be seen as can be seen later. So basically, although we need uh, this much of reinforcement, 773 in the transverse direction, it might not be sufficient sometimes and we may have to uh, check whether we need to provide some extra reinforcement to allow for shear between flange and the web. So before looking at that, we'll first look at the vertical shear calculation. So, so we have to look at the shear at two locations. One is, you know, we have to check the shear at a distance d away within this flange. We have to check shear at a distance d away in this flange. That is one of the checks we have to do. And then we also should check for shear along the beam by considering this as the beam. By considering this as the beam, we have to consider, we have to check for shear along the beam. So there are two locations we have to check for shear. And uh, so first we'll uh, look at the, look at along the beam. And uh, if you look at SAP 2000, and you can see the shear force diagram, giving values like 1127 here. And uh, look at this span. So different values, different locations. So if you look at this one, 
I have marked the values at uh, different sections and uh, the maximum shear at here is 1127. So the shear here is 1127. And we can also see what is the shear value at 3.3 one, one, uh, meters. At 3.3 meters, here you can see 3.299, so it is 3.3 meters. The shear is about 1020. So at the face of the column, at the face of the column, the shear value is 1020. The shear value is 1020. So similarly at many other places like 0.2 meters on this side, you can find the shear force at the face of the column. And at the face of the column, I can find the shear at 3.3. So it is close to 1020. And uh, similarly, I can look at the next span and find the shear at the face of the column at 0.2 meters. At 0.2 meters, it's about 869. So likewise, you know, because we may have a bending moment diagram, we can find the shear at the face of the column, the shear at face of the column. And also I can find the shear values, simple D away from the face of the column. I can also find the shear force values, simple D away from the face of the column. So if I look at here, so simple D is 840. So 840 plus 200 is 1040. And if I deduct, three, deduct that from 3500, then the chain edge is 2.46. So you can see the distance from here, 2.46. Four six. I'm looking at the value at two point four six. Oh, the shear is five hundred and sixty seven. She is five hundred sixty seven. Two point. Minus 67. And on this side, at a distance of uh, 0 0.84 plus 0 0.2, 1.04. So at a distance of 1.04. On this side, again, I can find the value like 460. So basically you can find those values. I think I would have got it. This is 420. At a distance 1.04. Yes, that is 420. I think I have selected the wrong value here. The value I have to select is at uh, 2.46 is around 572, but uh, I have selected the value of 715, so it's a wrong value. Uh, it is about 500 something. and. Uh, I can also select here 1.04 away the value is yeah. 
188. So the value I have selected is here. So basically, this value is a little too high. It should have been 500 something, not uh, uh, 750. So anyway, we'll look at the calculation. So basically, there are two locations. We have to check the shear. One is at the face of the column. And at the face of the column, we have to see whether there can be crushing failure. So which is given by this equation, that is uh, 0.124 BWD, this, with uh, theta as 22 degrees. And you can see uh, it can carry a shear force of 1,237 kilonewtons, whereas uh, the shear that we have is 1,023. So which means, you know, we are okay at this location. And then uh, simple D away, I have considered this as 715, but actual value is less than that. It is something like 560 something like 560 so uh, at 2.46 yes at 2.46 it's 572 it's 572 not uh, 715 572 so we have to actually calculate uh, the value 572 to the power 3 divided by 0.78 divided by 840 divided by 500 divided by 2.5 for 22 is 2.5 is 0.69 so this should be 0.69 and uh, so if you are providing h10 bars 157 divided by 6.9 gives a spacing of uh, 225 millimeters. So it gives a spacing of 225 millimeters. So instead of 175, we can actually provide reinforcement as 225 centers. So basically you can check for shear. And when you know the shear force, we can also find the additional longitudinal force. And then this should be again based on 572. So that is 0.5 into 572 into 2.5 is equal to 715. And uh, so because I have used a higher value, I'll quickly make that change on the north. So basically, uh, we have a force of 572 here. And then we end up with 72 here, 72, 72, and 6, 9, So you can try 225 centers, and then this is 572. So 0.5 into 572 into uh, 2.5 gives us 715. So if you are providing H20 bar, you can carry 
लॉर्ड ऑफ सेवन इंटू फाइव हंड्रेड इंटू थ्री हंड्रेड फोर्टीन हंड्रेड थर्टी सिक्स सेवन हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन डिवाइड बाय हंड्रेड थर्टी सिक्स फाइव पॉइंट टू फाइव so we need about uh, six numbers of h20 should be available at the support with proper anchor into resist this force so this means that the top reinforcement in the span may need to be increased to five numbers of h25 instead of five numbers of h20 so basically it may not be necessary to increase but we may have to increase it to uh, something like uh, three numbers of uh, two numbers of h25 and uh, and three numbers of h20 so basically all the reinforcement that you need should be continued over to the support and then uh, we can also check uh, the minimum link requirement which is given by this equation and it gives uh, something like if you are using h10 at 300 then we can get a value of asw os of 0.523 then the corresponding shear force carrying capacity is about uh, 428 kilonewtons so if you look at this diagram then you will see that you know if you look at the critical sections all these critical sections are having 184 here and uh, this value of 428 at which location so we are looking at 428 and you can see 428 428 is at is at a distance of 2.19 from the start of the beam So three point five minus two point one nine will give us one point three one meters. So here one point three one meters is there. So if you look at this one, this distance is one point three one one point three one point three meters away. We get four hundred twenty eight. so there's a small distance over which we need h 10 at 225 and this area also we should provide h 10 at 225 so basically uh, this will be closer and uh, here you can see the shear force is only 184 but uh, the nominal links or minimum links can carry 428 which means you know all this area we can provide the minimum links this area also we can provide minimum links and here you can see the critical section the the shear force is 420 and uh, the minimum links can carry 428 that means all this area we can have minimum links and here you can see at this critical section uh, we are having 375 whereas uh, minimum links can carry 428 that means all this area we can have minimum links so except this area of 1.3 meters where we need to have h10 at 225 everywhere else in this beam we can have h10 at 300 as the shear link so basically sorry about that small mistake and uh, 
So basically, you can see that when it comes to shear, you know, in this beam, except for a small region here, everywhere else we can have the minimum uh, links, which is uh, H10 at 300 centers. Whereas uh, in this area, we can have uh, H10 at 225. Actually, the minimum link requirement is uh, less than H10 at 300. But uh, because the shear links are going to be too far apart, I have selected H10 at 300. So I can provide H10 at 300 everywhere except in this particular location. So that's the shear calculation. And in addition to shear, you have to look at the additional longitudinal reinforcement before curtailing. And you can see the all the top reinforcement that you provide in the span can continue over to the span. And you might need about two extra reinforcement as well. That is, you know, instead of five numbers of 20 millimeter bars, you might need uh, two numbers of 25 and three numbers of 20. So once you do all the check all this, then the other important thing is, you know, what will happen between the interface of web and the flange, web and the flange. And here you can see we are dealing with fairly high shear forces. So to determine what's happening between web and the flange, what we have to do is we have to look at the bending moment diagram and see how fast the bending moments are changing. And uh, here you can see from zero to maximum, it changes over a length of 0.68 into two, that is 1.36 meters, over a length of 1.36 meters, it changes from zero to 508. But if you take half the length, then you will see the maximum change occurs over is 394 kilonewton meters. The bending moment becomes 394 here from zero, and this change occurs over a length of 0.68 meters. So basically what happens is, here you get one bending moment, here you get another bending moment. So the change in bending moment will increase the force in the flange, and that increase in the force can cause a certain amount of shear at the interface, and that shear has to be resisted by using these transverse reinforcement. And already we are providing transverse reinforcement for carrying flexure. But in addition to that, we might need some reinforcement. So there are two conditions to be satisfied. One is to see whether there can be crushing of concrete in compression and then we also need to find this particular value, which will tell us whether the reinforcement is actually needed or not. If the reinforcement is needed, then we are to provide the reinforcement by using this equation. So there are three, two conditions to be satisfied and based on the conditions, you can decide whether to provide the reinforcement or not. So that's the other requirement. So we look at that to decide on the change in the force, decide on the change in the force, we need to know the bending moment, the way that the bending moment is changing and the maximum value that may be assumed for delta x, that is this distance, is half the distance between the section where the moment is zero and where the, where the moment is maximum. So what it says is that distance is half the distance between zero moment and the maximum moment. So how to find all this information is, you look at the bending moment diagram. And when you look at the bending moment diagram, and you can see that the bending moment
the very moment this here the path the very moment diagram and here you can see it's zero the maximum moment occurs somewhere close to 1.39 and that's the location where the shear will be zero so the shear is almost zero at 1.39 so shear is almost zero at 1.39 and if you look at this particular location it is 2.76 meters away 2.76 minus 1.39 gives 1.37 divided by 2 you get 0.68 so the so this distance is 1.39 and half of that is 0.68 so that's how you calculate these values. So these values have been obtained directly from the bending moment diagram. And here you can see the maximum occurs close to 1.39. So I have considered it's 1.38. And the distance between this point and this point is about one point, again, close to 1.38, uh, 1.39, oh, sorry, 1.37. So divided by two, you get 0 0.68. 685, I have considered this as 0.68. And uh, then what you do is you will find this, this 1.3938. So 1.38 plus 0.68 use 2.06 so you go to the chain age of 2.06 2.06 and then find the bending moment 2.06 the bending moment is close to 395 so i have considered it as 394 here you can see i have considered it as 394 and then you'll ask, where do you get 508? And you get 508 close to the center. You get uh, a value close to 508. So you can see 512. So close to the center, you'll get something like 508. So that's how you find these numbers. So all these numbers have come directly from the bending moment diagram. And uh, these distances all are based on the shape of the bending moment diagram. And the fact that the distance is given as half the distance between zero and maximum moments. So that way you can actually work out these values. And once you know these values, we, are, we, we know that the bending moment is changing from zero to 394. And this change occurs over a distance of 0.68 meters. And to prevent crushing of concrete in the uh, prevent crushing of concrete in, of the flange in compression, first we have to find how much the force is changing. The change in uh, longitudinal force is uh, given by this equation. That is, you know, force in change in the force is divided by change in the moment divided by the lever arm and the lever arm is considered as the depth minus half the flange thickness. And then we have the flange on both sides. We have the flange on this side and this side. So we have to consider only one side and the force on this flange is equal to the total force on the flange multiplied by this width divided by the total width. So that's how it has been calculated. So this is the total force multiplied by the projection on one side divided by the full width. And when you calculate that, you will see that the answer is about 190 kilonewtons. And then this 190 kilonewton acts over this particular phase. So if you divide 190 by the area of this phase, then you will get the shear stress. 
then you get the shear stress. So the shear stress is equal to 300 multiplied by 680, and you will get a value of 0.93. And uh, <coughs> and then you can also determine uh, this particular parameter. <coughs> And it says, you know, if the shear stress is less than or equal to KFCTD, no extra reinforcement is required. No extra reinforcement is required. The value of K is 0.4. So you have to decide the value of FC, FCTD, K times FCTD, and it is the tensile strength of uh, co concrete. The design tensile strength of concrete, FCTD means design tensile strength of concrete. And how you find these parameters is by looking at the, the zero code. And, uh, and if you look at this particular page, page 28 of the page 29, there's a table given. And in that table, you can see FCTM, FCTK, all are given. These equations are given in that equation, in that table. So these equations are given in the table. From that, you can find the values. On the other hand, you know, you don't have to calculate the values. The values are also given for uh, For 25 megapascal concrete, the values are given as 2.6 and 1.8. For 30 megapascal concrete, it's given as 2.9 and 2. So here you can see 2.9 and 2. And uh, to find the design strength, you have to divide the, the actual strength by 1.5. So you see it's the value is 0 0.54 and uh, the strength is 0.54, the stress is 0.93. That means we have to actually provide reinforcement. So to provide reinforcement, we have to make use of this particular equation. And uh, before providing reinforcement, we also have to check whether the, there can be crushing of crushing of concrete. To decide on the decide whether it the concrete can be crushed, we have to see what is the shear stress and it should be less than nu which is 0 0.8, 0 0.6 times 1 minus uh, fck over 250. fcd is uh, fck divided by 1.5 sine theta cos theta is 1 over cot theta plus uh, tan theta so you can write this equation for instead of this one vd is equal to nu Nu is 0.6 times this. FCD is FCK divided by 1.5. Sine theta to cos theta means 1 over cot theta plus tan theta. So when you do that calculation, it is also necessary to use an angle of 26.5 degrees. You see VD is 4.22, whereas our stress is only 0.93. So basically, there cannot be any crushing failure of concrete. And then we can actually uh, determine the reinforcement requirement using this equation. And uh, you'll see that, you know, we need some reinforcement and that reinforcement can be provided by adjusting the reinforcement that we have already provided. So that's the way that, you know, you can uh, design the inverter T-beam and it knows a little bit of calculation, especially when you when you want to check the the interface between the flange and the the web. And because of that reason, it's useful to use uh, do the analysis by using a software like SAP two thousand. So that you know all these uh, distances and the bending moment shear force values can be obtained directly from the bending moment diagram that you are using. So uh, any questions on this 
the design of inverted T beam. In addition to all this, you know, we have to check the shear at a distance D away from the here to see whether there can be any shear failure in this area. So that is also needed. So I have not done that in this example. So I will include that also. So basically, this is the way you can design an inverted T-beam foundation. And uh, do you have any questions? Inuril, are you there? Yes, sir. Any questions on this? No, sir. No. Okay, so I will uh, do some uh, these few corrections and upload, uh, convert it to PDF and upload this one, right? Okay, Dunil. Okay, sir. Right. So with that, I will stop the lecture and uh, I will stop sharing and